Now, people, I'm back again. We're talking about the sword and the seed. We're talking about Psalm 120. How he said, when I speak, they are for war. You know, some people, when you speak the word of God, they are not going to hear a word you have to say. You understand? But that's that first stage. But you can get past the first stage. Everybody can. If you faint not. That's why the Bible keeps saying, faint not. You know, Jesus kept pushing at the Pharisees and the scribes constantly. He didn't necessarily give up on them. He kept pushing at them. He said, hey, you're in danger of eternal hellfire. You see, at that point, they was in the stage where the devil instantly comes away and takes the word that's sown in their hearts away from them. And there's a lot of people like that. I don't want to hear what you got to say. I don't want to hear what you got to say. I ain't got time for that. Don't be pushing your Bible here. Don't be pushing your Jesus. You Jesus freak. You Christian. That's what they basically used to call us. And we turned it to a positive. You Jesus freak you. Hmm. Well, if God keeps having me come at you, you might have hope yet. Think before you became a Christian. How many times you were stuck in stage one. When somebody was talking about God and you like, you walked away. You don't even want to hear it. You had no part in it. You understand? Or uh, then you might go to the second stage when you hear the word. You understand this? And then you hear it right then. But when you go away, you forget about the words you heard. There's a lot of people stuck in that stage. They'll sit there and talk with you about God. And love the word that is being said to them. But when they go away out of the presence. But you know that also has a lot to do with with you being a soul of the word, but that's a good stage to be in too. Somebody's willing to listen. Somebody willing to listen to the word sold to them. That's why I've got stage one, but they ain't even willing to listen. They don't even want to hear what you got to say. Now the second stage, that's a good stage to be in, but it's not the stage you need to be in. Because what you're trying to become is a sower of the word, right? You're trying to become a sower of the word. That's when you're trying to reach to that point. Once you start sowing the word yourselves, you're going to grow stronger yourself. And yet, you're still going to have people around you who ain't going to hear it. Those devils that call you a devil, or call you evil, or don't know, don't believe in what you say. Now, the third stage. Now, this is one of the most dangerous stages in being a follower of Christ. I'm telling you, people. Did you agree what he did you hear what he just said in regards to the things that choke the word up and make it unfruitful? Did you hear what he talked about? The deceitfulness of riches, the lust thereof, the cares of things in this world. It makes the word unfruitful. And if you look at the world we live in now, the majority of people are always talking about the prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel got a lot to do with materialism and worldly things. And these people are growing, they're growing, they're growing. Now, if I'm going to talk about that, I got to also talk about the tares in the wheat, the tares in the harvest. Christ said he's going to allow them to grow together. You understand? You know, I know people like Paul said, as long as the gospel is preached, but there is a right and a wrong way to love somebody. <laughs> That's a right way. To showcase the love of God. And there's a wrong way to showcase the love of God. Why is it written that way? Now the fourth stage, you didn't got past the materialism. You didn't got past the, the cares of this world. Now you're ready to join in the harvest too. But the thing is, the third stage, they in the harvest too. You see the first and the second stage, they ain't really in the harvest. They still trying to hear it. Do you understand? They still trying to hear the word of God. Still trying to receive it. Still trying to graft it into themselves. The third stage, they know it. They know the word. But they still don't understand it completely. And I'm going to tell you something. All Christians are going to go through all three stages for sure. Everybody is either in stage one. Let me hear you. Hear me now. Everybody in this world is in one of those stages. You can put everybody in there. Take an atheist. What stage they in? 
they ain't trying to hear it. Take a Muslim or a Buddhist. A lot. Of, I'm talking about just saying people who got other worship other gods and things and such like that. They don't really want to hear the word of God at all. You understand? Now take the second stage though. That's thing. That's the. That's a scary one too though. Like they hear it, then they go away. They forget. You understand? They forget when trials and tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake. It's like they're not. Let's put it this way. They're rookies. They don't really understand. They're not willing to stand their ground for the word's sake. Or if something bad happens in their life, they turn away from the faith. And they go back to the world. And there's a lot of people stuck in that stage too. I've been stuck in that stage. You understand? The third one. Ooh, boy. I'm telling y'all, man. A lot of people stuck in that stage. Every time they talk about how blessed they are, it's about materialism. Rich. I always bring up Steve Hall because that's one thing he pushed more than anything. What about spiritual growth? What about sowing the word of God and not linking it to material things? He said, the, the carnal mind minded person cannot please God the third stage is a carnally minded Christian they don't understand it's about saving souls not trying to get rich here he said I don't even worry about that so your, your sermon shouldn't even be focused on how to get rich in this world but how to get spiritually rich and righteousness and well doing that shouldn't even be a priority. But look at the world we live in. The majority of teachers focus on what? Materialism. You can't take none of this stuff with you. You got to work hard for what you want. Work hard for the Lord and doing his will and doing the things he commands of you. And you won't even have to worry about material things because the things that you have need of and the assistance that you need, the clothes that you need, the food that you need will come to you. I can tell you a lot about myself. When I first found God, I was in that, I think I got pushed forward a lot. <laughs> because I was thinking I was going to go hit the lottery the next day because I thought it was about materialism. I thought I was going to be rich as I don't know what. You know, if I have more money, I can do more things for you, Lord. Wrong. You don't need a lot of money to do things for me, says the Lord. I got unlimited storehouses. All you got to do is what I ask you to do. You don't need money to do. To talk. How much money you need to talk? How much money you need to heal someone? How much money you need to cast out devils? None. <laughs> All the Holy Spiritual filled things, the spiritual gifts does not cost a thing. Love don't cost a thing. True love don't cost. You see, some people take bribes. Money. I heard a sermon one day about somebody's talking about how much money they got from somebody, a donation they got. But a lot of people don't understand scripture. He said, if you can't understand the sow and the seed. And you know what? How often do you hear the sow and the seed preached? Really in depth. Let's put it this way. God didn't have me talk about it so many times. I can't even remember. All the time. <laughs> so it's got to be some importance to it. Why it's got to be important to it? Because Jesus said, if you don't understand this, how can you understand anything else? He said he looked upon them with anger when they was talking bad about him by trying to heal somebody on a Sabbath day. 
They don't understand. He's Lord of the Sabbath. And if you got work to do for God on the Sabbath day, you better do it. You understand? It's simple. You know. Take if you go to the store on the Sabbath day and leave your phone there. You're going to go looking for it. On the Sabbath day. You know, God is more understanding than people make him out to be. Way more. The Pharisees could never grasp this thing. They think he came to do away with the law and the commandments. No, he's trying to teach you how to do it the right way. And sometimes, in certain cases, he made it even more um, stricter to look upon a woman and lust after her. You know, we was thinking for spiritual, we were thinking physical adultery. Then God took it to the point, point of spiritual adultery. Your eyes. He did this because people be like, man, I don't sin. I don't do nothing wrong. <laughs> we will see about that. Because we all need our sins forgiven. But why for a lot of people's sins ain't being forgiven? Because they just don't believe. And the thing is, as long as you got breath in your body, you can reach the full stage. You know, a lot of people, I, be, I believe God can save you on your deathbed. I really truly believe that. But do you want that? Don't you want to feel like you're saved before that? Do you understand? Like, me, I'm not saying God doesn't do it because I don't put nothing past God. But like, you didn't live the whole life of sin and evil. And then you finally get shot. And then you write there, Lord, forgive me for everything. What have you learned? That Christ is Lord, you knew that. That's why on your deathbed you called upon him. You knew Christ was Lord. Do you understand? You know, I know movies show it all the time. He said the tares gonna grow together. So if you wasn't encouraging people in Christ and spreading the gospel and, and doing what he commands of you in regards to his word, how can you expect just a one hit acquittal? To me, that's scary to even think like that. Well, I'm going to wait to give my life to God because I got time. He said, they all will know me. So it's not going to be any excuses for any man, woman, or child. No excuses. I take the people like, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. And they're not grounded spiritually. And then the mark of the beast pops up. And they're not grounded spiritually. They're not saved or washed in the blood. What you think going to happen? Right? What you think going to happen? You think everything's just going to be right? Like right then. Okay. You got it right. You're most likely going to be tricked by the, the evil one. Probably already you have com committed the unforgivable sin. Right? Man, these people are crazy. When people cannot drive. When the lights powers are off, they can't. It's like they get lost. <laughs> but it was a bad storm last night. I, I watched the news a little bit and um I was like, man, it's a storm coming. The wind was blowing and everything like that, and I went to sleep. I don't even know if the wind was blowing. I was knocked out, but I obviously see that it did some damage. Power is on, on government street over here in Mobile. The power's off here and there. But the thing is, God said the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Think about how you want to get to a point where you like Jesus, but you never will be Jesus, that you can sleep through a storm. Right? 
You know, Jesus was in the boat sleeping. While the storm was raging. Where's your faith? You know. Where's your faith? You're going to have moments of when your faith is going to be tested. But as you grow, you'll get stronger and stronger. Do you understand? But let's go back to, I'm going to end with the people that don't want to believe the truth. When Jesus spoke, he was trying to give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. He was trying his best to do so. And they didn't want it for some reason. They couldn't receive it. The devil was right there. <laughs> Snatching it away from them. You know, don't get to a point. You know, a lot of people grow and they can. You ever heard the same people like, but they stuck in their ways. The Pharisees were basically in a stage where they were stuck in their ways. And a lot of people are going to get to a stage where they're stuck in their ways. It's nothing that you can really say. They believe in God. Like the Pharisees believed in God. They did. But they didn't believe in Jesus. And sometimes it's vice versa. They believe in Jesus, but they don't believe in God. How can your faith be more made whole like that? To have so much faith in God, but did deny the only begotten son. The Muslims fall into this category. The world knows that Jesus existed, even though they try to dumb it down in regards to anything biblical. That's why nothing biblical is taught in schools, because they try to act like all oh, this was a fairy tale. But they'll teach Greek mythology, all these other mythologies. They'll teach about Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad. They'll teach about all these other characters. But it's just elude Jesus. David existed. You don't hear about David in the history of books. You don't hear about Solomon in the history of books. You don't hear about a lot of things that's in the Bible in the history of books because they're trying to blot out the truth. And that's scary, man. That's frightening. That's very frightening, people. And people are trying their best to just blot out the name of God. The name of his son. You see, the devil don't care if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you got another spiritual energy that's dwelling in your body. Do you know that? Everybody's spiritual. Do you know that? But everybody's not holy spiritual. The Pharisees were not holy spiritual know that right it makes sense makes perfect sense I don't know why people don't want the truth you know I know why because that devil they're snatching it straight away from them. you know I can tell you stories about the spiritual warfare that I've been through as a follower of Christ that lets me know that there's evil spirits out there. And the Bible lets you know that there are evil spirits out there. And that there are deceiving spirits out there. But there's only one Holy Spirit. <coughs> the devil's answer to him. Why did the devil's answer to him? You know he created them for his good. When he, he created the angels and the principalities up there. He prayed all for his good. But he gave all free will to either worship him or not. Satan had a choice. But this is the crazy thing. Satan still worked for God. Those evil spirits still work for God. They know his power. They know his might. They messed up. And they know they can't do nothing else but wait for their eternal damnation. So they try to sow discord. They try to bring more people around to their ways. Three stages. The third stage is you still living in the way of the devil. The second stage, you still living in the way of a devil. The first stage, you still living in the way of a devil. You still ain't right yet. Take Judas. Take Judas. Walked and talked with Jesus Christ. But yet, 
never came to fruitation. He was stuck in the third stage. Money, deceitfulness of riches, choked the word up, made it unfruitful. That's why he sold Jesus out for a few measly coins. If y'all don't see this, y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. You understand, people? He's coming back. As you can see in that, that scripture we, I just read to you, Jesus was angry. He looked at them in anger. Like You think about why he looked at them in anger. I'm talking about spiritual things right now, right? He saw something in them that they didn't even see in themselves. He saw the devil at work. He saw the devil in the details. You do know that, right? He saw the devil in the details. That's all I got for you right now, people. Have a blessed one.